Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're gonna we're gonna Hallelujah. Who did your devotional? I did. <laughs> okay, I can say that now. I did. You I can did. say that now. Yes. Okay. You're welcome, Miss Yolanda. Yogi. I'm gonna leave that part alone. Hallelujah. Okay, so discipline. That was what today was about. Discipline. We don't like discipline. Ooh, uh, we don't like discipline. It says, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you. Oops. Hebrews 12, 5. Oh, it's easy to it, it, it's easy to quench the spirit. We do it by despising the discipline of the Lord and by losing heart when he rebukes us. If we have a shallow experience of salvation and sanctification, we mistake the shadow for the reality when God disciplines us. And we say, oh, that must be the voice of the devil. Anybody ever do that? Uh, when God starts to rebuke you, God starts to discipline you, and you say, and you say, oh, get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> oh, I rebuke you, devil, in Jesus' name. And you can rebuke God all you want. It ain't going to do you any good. Um, amen. We have to get to the point in our walk with God that we realize he's in control. Mm -hmm. Most of us haven't got there yet. Most of us still think we're in some kind of control. Oh, so you're going to get mad at me. But most of us think that we're in some kind of control. Most of us haven't got to the point that 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 we realize that in everything God's in control. Amen. Some of us, we, we want to have our way in, in, in what's going on. I want to have my way in what the Lord does for me. I want to have my way in what in, in how God corrects me. Oh, God certainly wouldn't correct me. I've done everything right. Why would he correct me? Well, yeah. let's deal with that for all. Okay, let's deal with that arrogance for a minute. Um, a a amen. You know, God, when we get to the point where we understand that God's in control, he's in complete control. He knows He knows the very hair on your head. I don't mean that he knows how many hairs you've got. He knows which ones you've still got. The ones that fell out in the shower, he knows not just that you had some hairs fall out in the shower. He knows which hair fell out in the shower. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me? Uh -huh. If he knows that much about you, don't you think he knows, uh, don't you think he deserves the, the recognition of being in total control? And if he's in total control, then when things that we deem as bad begin to happen, he knows. Read Job. Job, nothing happened to Job that God didn't approve. Yeah. Oh, hear this. Ain't nothing happening to you that God doesn't approve. Yeah. I'm not no. saying he does all this stuff, but he approves it. Yeah. And if we understand that, that when these bad things begin to happen, when, 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 the bill comes and there's no money. When when the doctor gives us that report, when when these bad things begin to happen, you know, when when you know when these things begin to happen, if we understand that he's in control, then then we can rest in him. We can under we can begin to come up under his authority on what he's saying in that situation. Uh, we talked about that a minute ago. Uh, oh, amen. It really helps when you to understand that you really grasp that it really helps when certain circumstances happen. Yes, I. I'll speak for myself. It it kind of like it takes the pressure. It lifts the pressure because I know God is in this. Right, God's got His finger in my Kool Aid. 
Yeah. And 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 if his fingers in my Kool Aid, then even if it's a bitter bitter tasting Kool Aid, I know that he is trying to to make me look more like his son. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Even if it hurts. Yeah. Especially if it hurts. Mm -hmm. We don't have a problem giving God the glory and giving God the honor when it when it feels good. Yeah. When right. things are going good, we just we don't have a problem just jumping up and saying, Praise you, Lord, hallelujah, you're, you're such a good God. Mm -hmm. But when things start falling apart, when things start when things start going wrong, now we got now now it's hard. Now now we start rebuking the devil. Oh, get off my finances, devil. Get off my health, devil. It's not the devil. Well, it may be him actually carrying this stuff out, but it's 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 for your own benefit. It's for your own good. God is trying to teach you something. All things work together for good. All things. All things work. To, come on, we 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 read Romans eight twenty nine. Let's read Romans eight twenty eight. All things work together for good. Yeah. Man. So if everything is working to the even the even the hard things, even the things that hurt, even the things that 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 we want to blame on the enemy. Um uh, I don't I don't, you know, I you know, we 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 want uh, I'm trying to be careful here. Hallelujah. Even even those things that are hard for us is coming from God. And and the sooner we grasp a hold of that, the sooner that we, the sooner we come to rest in that. Yeah, yeah. This it, it the the sooner that we'll have peace in the middle of the storm. Come on, remember when Jesus told the disciples that we're going to go to the other side, and they all got in a boat and they started going to the other side, and the storm happened, <laughs> and Jesus was asleep in the boat. Homeboy had the nerve to be taking a nap in the boat. Are you hearing this thing? And while everybody, and they woke him up, they said, don't you care? And what did he say? He rebuked them because of their faith. He said, you little faith. Don't you know that whenever the storm is happening and you have peace in it, that means you have authority over it. Jesus got up and rebuked the storm. I'm just giving you a principle here. This is kind of a sidebar principle. But whenever you have peace in the middle of your storm, you have authority over that storm. Oh, let me help you out something else. The only way you're going to have peace in the middle of, the, of that storm is to know that God's in control. Man. Even in the storm. Mm -hmm. See, Jesus knew that, 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 that the assignment was to go to the other side. It wasn't to get shipwrecked. He said, let's get in this boat. Let's go to the other side. When God tells you we're going to go, and he's God. When God tells you we're going to go to the other side, then there's going to be another, you're going to the other side. Just like when everybody was saying, that when, when, when grandma was, was, on her deathbed, and, and everyone was saying, "Oh, you know, Tammy was calling people to go go to say your goodbyes." Um, and I went in, and 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 we talked for a little while, and she said, "Well, the Lord told her that uh, when this was all over, that she's to be a lighthouse for Him." Mm -hmm. And I said, "Well, okay, that that means that there's going to be another side to this. You're not going anywhere, Amen. because you have an assignment." Oh, we have an assignment, y'all. We may not know what that assignment is. We may not know what the end of that assignment is, but we should know that God is in control. We should know that God has taken us into that place. We should know that the that the that the whole purpose of everything, especially those things that get on our nerves. You ever get your nerve get on? Yes. <laughs> My nerve has been stepped on a few times. Uh, amen. Those are the times that God is dealing with you. To transform you into his son. Amen. 
I know you ladies are going, no, 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 I'm his daughter. No, you're not. You're his son. Yep. You're his son. If I'm a bride, you're a son. Amen. Amen. Let's just let's just get let's just get that straight. There's no gender. As long as you're holding on to your gender, you're not there. Okay. There's no gender in the kingdom. Oh. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, let's get back into this thing here. Let's get back into this thing. Yeah. So it's easy to quench the spirit when we despise the discipline of the Lord and by losing heart when he rebukes us. Because sometimes we'll, we'll blame his rebuke on the devil. It's not the devil. It's him. He's rebuking us. He's, he's correcting us. Rebuke simply means correct. It's all it means. It doesn't mean spank. Some of you know, well, you know, chastise. No, it, it simply means correcting. Um, amen. Um, if we have a shallow experience of salvation and sanctification, what that means is if we have a if if we have this shallow experience, we we think that salvation and sanctification is all about me. If I think that salvation and sanctification is all to make me feel better, if I think that salvation and sanctification is 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 all to make to make to is is to feel good. Then that's a shallow experience of salvation and sanctification. Sanctification means that you've been set apart. Okay, sanctification means that you've been set apart. You're set apart from unto. That's, that's what set apart means. Amen. If 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 I have this phone. If you can see it. if I have this phone and I and I redeem this phone and I set it apart for my use, every one of us got one of these. Maybe not exactly like this one, but we all got what they call a phone. Okay, Amen. It's those are little cool little cool little devices. You can actually talk to somebody in real time. You don't have to text them. You know, a Amen. You can actually call them up and talk to them. Amen. Amen. Every one of us went to the went to the went to the to the phone store, ATT, Verizon, Timo, whoever. Okay, every one of us went to the phone store and we picked up the phone we wanted. Am I lying? I think we all did. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And we redeemed that. <gasps> we redeemed it. We and, and we set it apart. From the T-Mobile store or Verizon store or AT&T or the phone store, we set it apart from them unto us. Now it's going to be used according to what we purpose in our heart to use this phone for. That's right. Every single, I was just, I was just, uh, uh, I was just doing something with. Tammy's car, and I needed her phone because she has an app in her phone that helps me to work on the thing I was doing in her car. And and it's not on my phone. It's on her phone. So everyone is set up according to the user. So my phone is set up according to the way I want. Your phone is set up according to the way you want. Does the phone complain? No. Sometimes it hiccups. You just turn it off, turn it back on again. Uh, amen. Uh, but for the most part, no, the phone doesn't complain. It just does what it's what it's asked to do. See, we've been set apart. We've been redeemed and set apart from the world, from not the planet. That's not what the world means. The world, the the world there. It means it means the 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 world system. We've been set apart from this system unto the Lord's system. Mm -hmm. We're we're molded and crafted according to what He wants from us. Not according to what you know. Not according to what my phone wants. I didn't set it up and put apps on it and and and, and do things with it according to what it wanted. I never asked it. A, I never asked it a thing. I said, "This is what I want you to do." 
Now I'm going to equip you to do it. Oh, this is good. Now I'm going to equip you to do it. This is what I want my phone to do. Now I'm going to equip it to do it. I'm going to put the apps on it and, and program it and, and, and give it the passwords and do whatever it needs to, to do, whatever it needs to do the thing that I want it to do. I'm going to equip it. And each one of us, oh, Lord have mercy. Each one of us have been set apart from the Lord, excuse me, from the, the world system unto the Lord and have been equipped to do the thing that he wants from us. Hallelujah. That's Each a good one. Have been That's equipped good. to do That's the good. thing. And 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 just because just because my wife's phone is equipped to do something that my phone isn't able to do doesn't mean that my phone is not just as valuable as her phone. It's just equipped to do something different than what my phone. Are you are you hearing me? Just because you're equipped to do one thing and I'm equipped to do another thing doesn't mean a doggone thing. It simply means that we're equipped differently to go into the place that we're equipped to go. Yeah. But God isn't asking us to do anything that he's not equipping us to do. Yes. Yes. Every now and then I got to go in and I got to update an app. Anybody ever have to update an app? Yeah. yeah. Every now and then we got to go in and we got to update an app. Every now and then, you know, we got to go in and we got, you know, our, our system kind of burps and we got to turn it off, turn it back on again. Amen? Amen. Every now and then we got to do that. Every now and then we need a little correction. Every now and then we need a little rebuke. Every now and then we need a little direction. You know, the, the, the Bible says, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You know what the rod and staff were? To give direction to the sheep. And to fight off the wolf, to fight off the enemy. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So when God gives us direction, sometimes, you know, sometimes that direction is different than what, the way we want to go. We want to go to the left. And he says, no, 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 I want you to go to the right. And so we'll, we'll fight. Oh, I want to go over here. And, and, but, but if, if we take comfort knowing that he's in control, he's the one in charge of this whole, this whole shooting match, then, then we'll just, okay, Lord, this is the way you want me to go. Yeah, I still want to go that way, but maybe you can let me go there another day. Are you are you hearing this? Thing? Yeah. yeah. His rod and his staff comfort us. Because as long as he's directing us, we're in his will. We're in his plan. The minute we start going against what he's saying, that's when we start getting out of his will and out of his plan. And what what do you do whenever your phone starts acting up and you can't you can't fix it? You go to the store and you go, no. Oh, this one here too old is acting up. I'm gonna go get me no. You take it in, you you'll trade it in for a new phone. Or take a hammer through it. <laughs> take a hammer through it. That's that's the funnest thing. That shoot it, you know, whatever. Yeah. You know, whatever you gotta do, right? But you but you get a new one that's gonna that's gonna do the things that you've asked it to do. He's, I'm, I'm gonna help you out with something. God has a plan for each and every one of us. And if we're gonna fight him on that plan, if we're gonna if we're gonna have an attitude with him on that plan, um his plan's going to get done, y'all. If we're going to have attitude with him, then it may get done through someone else. He'll raise up a whole nother generation. He's not in a hurry. He'll raise up a whole nother generation to get his plan done. His plan will happen. Amen. Oh, this is this ain't going on well. Let me let me get back over here to the devotional. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. It says, if we have a shallow experience of salvation and sanctification, we mistake the shadow for the reality when God disciplines us. And we say, oh, it must be the voice of the devil. Never quench the spirit. Never give the devil. Uh, let me. Uh, okay, Lord. All right. 
we give the devil way too much grip. Yeah. We give him way too much grip. Amen. Um, and, and, you know, I'm convinced that he's, you know, somewhere in his red suit and orange and all that, page four. And, and we're blaming him for stuff. And he's going, like, what did I do? I didn't do that. We give the devil way too much credit. Mm-hmm. We blame way too much stuff on the devil. When what we really should be doing is looking to God for even the hard times, even the even the even the times, even the times when we run up against that sandpaper Christian. Y'all know that sandpaper Christian. Oh, yeah. y'all know that sandpaper Christian. That 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 one that just gets on our nerves. Ain't none of you had a ain't none of you had a brother or sister get on your nerves. I have. Yeah. I, I learned. A- amen. I, I I learned. I mean, I, I was I was ready to go. I was ready to go fist cups with this guy. Man. I, we just none, nonetheless. Let, let, let me move past. <laughs> I'm not confessing that today. Um, but even though there's times when we're dealing with sandpaper first, so those ones that just throw us along the way, those ones that get on that last nerve, you just start burning it in. Running, poking, poking the bear, poking, poking at that. Uh, it, it's not the devil. It's not your wife. It's not your husband. It's not your kids. It's God doing. Yep. It's God doing. If it's not his finger poking yet, he's given permission for that finger to poke. It. What we need to be doing instead of rebuking the devil, what we need to be doing instead of getting mad at people, what we need to be doing is 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 saying, Lord, what? Why? Why? What do you want? What are you trying to teach me? And if and if I can be so bold as to say, I think most of us kind of already know what he's trying to teach us when he's doing it. Because he doesn't get in there and deal with that last nerve until he's spoke this a few times. Uh, amen. He try to get our attention before it gets on our nerves. Yes, ma'am. Pastor Jerry, I really think that we need to pray and we need to Ask the Lord to show us to distinguish the difference when it's him and when it's the enemy. No, how do you know when it's the enemy and how do you know when it's just a test? When you're in that fiery trial. Because sometimes we can be in a fiery trial and we think it's the devil. Right. But actually it's the Lord that wants to wants us to uh overcome it. Right. It's it's my understanding that it's one hundred percent of the time a fiery trial. Mm-hmm. That the enemy's trying to get us to fall. He's trying to get us to mess up. He's trying to get us to focus on him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if we keep our focus on God, then we understand that it's just a trial that we're going through. Mm-hmm. It's just something that on the end of this, if we keep our focus on God. Uh, at the end of this, on the other side of this, we're going to look more like Jesus. Mm-hmm. Uh, amen. One hundred percent of the time, uh, if we if we give God the glory and not the enemy, mm-hmm. a- amen. It, it's it's a matter of who who are we going to trust? Who are we going to uh, who are we going to give the glory to? Oh, the devil's coming at me. Well, how's the devil coming at you? If you're supposed to be in the light, going 186,000 miles a second, and the devil's in the darkness, he can't see in the light, and you can't see in the dark. So how's he coming at you? Unless you jumped out of the light. it's, it's, It's always the Lord. I, I, I wish I could say that every time I go through something, I, I acknowledge this, but I'd be human too. 
Okay. And, but, but I understand that it, it's always the Lord. Even if it's the devil, the Lord gave permission. The Lord said, okay. Nothing happens in my life that the Lord didn't approve. Just like with Job. Just like with Job. The enemy had to have permission. He had to have permission. <laughs> and just like with Job, he has to have permission to, to deal with you. And the purpose of that permission is to, is to teach you something. It's to teach me something. At the end of the matter, Job, uh, Job had more than what he started. Job was a better person because of it. He went through loss. He went through a hurt. He went through. He went through some stuff. I'm not making light of what he lost. I mean, he lost his kids. A Amen. I'm not making light of that. That's you know you can't replace that. But God gave him more kids. Not that that's going to replace the ones he lost. So please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But. Nothing happened to Job that God didn't approve. Nothing. Um, Every step of the way. I so, said, okay, you can go mess with him. You just don't touch him. All right, you can go, just don't kill him. You can touch him, then, just don't kill him. Amen. So there's nothing that's going to happen to us that God doesn't know about, that God's not in on, that he's not in charge of. He's either in control of everything or he's not in control of anything. Yeah. And, and the minute we step back and say, well, this is the devil coming at me and, and I, need to, I need to fight the devil. Well, we need to fight the devil by dealing with the strongholds that's in our minds. We need to fight the devil by, by getting closer to God, because God's already defeated the devil. The Bible says that Jesus defeated the devil and put him to an open shame. So he's already defeated. He's, he's just, he's, he's a tool in God's hand being, being used to, 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 to teach us more about God. To teach us to bring us more into the image of the Son. Does that make any sense? Is this yeah? It makes yeah. sense to me, but I don't. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Okay. I want. I want to. I want to at least get to some of the lesson tonight. It says never quench the spirit. Do not despise him. Uh, when he says to you, "Do not be blind about this thing anymore." You aren't where you thought you were. Up until now, I haven't been able to reveal it to you, but I'm revealing it now. When the Spirit disciplines you like this, let him have his way. Let him get you rightly related to God. Never quench the Spirit, and do not despise him when he says, do not be blind about this anymore. You know, sometimes we go through these things in our in our life. Uh, we allow certain things in in our life that uh, that he kind of I don't want to say he overlooks, but he doesn't reveal them right because we're not ready for them. And then all of a sudden, he'll begin to reveal these things to us. You know, he'll begin to reveal that you know I don't want you. You know, for a long time I was I was a smoking Christian, and then he revealed to me that I don't want you doing. That. I want to help you. And there's things in your life that he's revealed to you that he doesn't want you to. I'm not even saying I'm not saying I'm not saying sin. Sometimes there's things in our life that just, you know, maybe we're watching too much TV. Maybe we, you know, uh not necessarily sinful things, but things that keep us out of his out of his hand, out of his providence to 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 be able to be molded by him into the image of the son. Sometimes things we, we get these things in us or, or or in our lives, and and God begins to reveal some things to us. He said, "Look, I, I want you to move away from that, and we'll ignore it." Anybody ever do that? Yep. 
I got both hands yes. way up. I got my feet up too. You just can't see. It. Amen. Um, sometimes you know God will say some stuff, and 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 I'll just pretend I didn't hear it. Oh, I'm just being real. I'm just being real here. I know. I know y'all never done nothing Amen. like that. Amen. That's you know, I know y'all never done nothing like that because you know y'all holy and all. But, um, Come on now. <laughs> um, yeah, I've I done it, uh, and, and I'm going to admit it. Amen? Yes, Lord. And he says, look, don't don't despise when God reveals these things. When God begins to show you these things, don't, don't pretend you didn't hear. Don't get mad at God. Just like whenever you teach your kids something, you, you're, you're not doing it to make them mad. You're doing it to make them better. Yes. Amen. Amen. Right. And when he's trying to teach us something, he's not doing it. He's not doing it to put a wedge between us. He's doing it to make us better. It's better. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. We don't we don't want to lose heart. We don't want to lose, you know, we don't want to lose heart whenever he does. He says, don't lose heart when God rebukes you. We get into a bad mood. With God and say, well, well, I, I can't help it. Anybody ever say, I can't help it? Mm -hmm. Oh, tell the truth, Shane and Devil. Yeah. I heard everybody here say that. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Amen. So, oh, well, I, I can't help it. Yes. I prayed about it. And, <laughs> and, and it still didn't turn out. <laughs> still didn't turn out right. I, I'm, I'm through trying. Oh, oh, I did that with, with smoking for years. It's a, a, I, I, I prayed to God, I said, God, deliver me, deliver me, God, deliver me. And, and I wake up the next day and I still want to smoke, you know. So I'm like, oh, God didn't deliver me. So one day I'm outside walking and smoking and praying. And 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 and, and, and I said, God, I need your help. I need you to deliver me. He said, he's already dead. I'm like, don't look like it. <laughs> Come on. All right. And, and but he did. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Are you hearing this? Thing? I can't help it. That's just the way it is. No, I have to by faith submit myself to what I expect. And if I expect that he's already delivered me, I have to by faith submit myself to the authority of being not a smoker. When he told me that, I haven't smoked since. Yeah, because we have a free will. We have, exactly, we have a free will. But even beyond the free will, beyond the free will, there's this place. There's this place where we have to submit ourselves to what we believe. That's it. That's it right there. Amen. We have faith, the will to do it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is coming under the authority of the thing you expect. And if I expect that I'm delivered, then I have to come under that authority of that deliverance. If I don't come under the authority of that deliverance, then I don't expect I'm delivered. Amen. I'll have it again. We all have a choice. We can obey God. Or we cannot. We can obey God. Or we can obey ourselves. Am I prepared to let God grip me by his power and do a work in me that is worthy of him? Sanctification isn't my idea. First off, let's just cruise with that. Sanct you didn't decide to be sanctified. It's not your idea. It's God's idea. And the sanctification that is God's idea isn't, he's not asking your permission. He is asking for your cooperation. Yes. But he's not asking your permission. Just because you don't like what he's sanctifying you in, just because you don't like the direction, doesn't mean that that's not where he wants you to go. 
Hmm. And it doesn't mean he's going to change his, his way. Your kids may not like the fact that you make them brush their teeth before they go to bed, but that doesn't really matter. They're going to still brush your teeth before they go to bed. And you're not doing it to make to 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 be mean. You're doing it so that their teeth don't fall out when they're 20. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. So sanctification isn't my idea of what I want God to do for me. It's God's idea of what he wants to do for me. And God has to bring me to the attitude of mind and spirit where I will let him sanctify me wholly, no matter the cost. Whatever the cost, I have to be willing to sanctify me. Even if it hurts. Even if it hurts. Oh. It's hurting. Sometimes it hurts. Sometimes it does. Yeah, I'm, I'm hurting. Sometimes it does hurt. Sometimes the sanctification hurts. Sometimes, sometimes it does. Amen. Amen. But we have to we have to be willing to allow him to do what he's doing. Allow him to make those changes in us and not be rebellious about it. Oh, are you doing that? I'm not going to change. Uh, anybody ever Anybody ever be stubborn with God? Oh, yes. Uh, amen. Oh, yes. I've been stubborn with God. What do you think you're doing? But I didn't do it that way. I didn't like uh, I, I was more, I was more, I rebuke you, devil. Ah, I was more focused on the devil. Say, ah, the devil's trying to do this to me. He's trying to hurt me. And so God's trying to correct me. God's trying to sanctify me. God's trying to make me into the image of his son. He may be using the enemy to do it. But it's him. Once we come to that understanding, that realization, we can be calm and sleep in the middle of the storm. Mm -hmm. But as long as we're tripping on 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 the storm, we're gonna have a hard time sleeping. We're gonna have a hard time being calm. We're gonna always be trying to fight a devil, fight an enemy that we're not equipped to fight. The devil's already been beaten. Don't you know? The yeah. Bible says he defeated the enemy and put him to an open shame. He's already been defeated. It means you can't get around. You don't have no feet. That was a joke. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I don't know. I don't know how much we're going to be able to get to this. I need to, man, I don't know. We're going to start anyway. Amen. 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 So, so in strongholds, what we've been talking about is in these strongholds, um, we're going to go over this, our, our base scripture, our base scriptures for Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. How do we do that? By casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having a and having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Oh, so we we we've been talking. That's our that's our main scripture for the whole study, amen. And we're gonna we're gonna kind of get into that a little bit. We talked about what strongholds are, um, and you know, a, a, amen. So let's get into that. It says, uh, it's "For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal." Well, that word "carnal" is natural. It means natural. Uh, the nature of the flesh, the Adamic nature. 
Remember, there are two people in this world. You say, no, 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 they're like 8 billion. No, there's not. There's two. You're either in Christ or you're in Adam, one or the other. No, 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 I'm an individual. No, you're not. Hush. Okay? You're born into Adam. You're born with a fallen nature. You're born into sin. The Bible says that we're all born in this, in this, in this Adamic nature. We're all born in it. Amen. Jesus brings us out of it. Yes, he does. Amen. Brings us into him. Yes. From Adam. So you're either in Adam, you were born in Adam, or you're in Christ. Some of us are in the church, but we're still in Adam. Mm. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone. Because that will get me uh, that will get me stoned. Hallelujah, and not in the good way. Hallelujah. Not that anyway, never mind, never mind. Those of you who know me know that was a joke. Okay, so so carnal is, is speaking of the unregenerated mind. It's speaking of our own reasoning. It's speaking of our education, our human, our human wisdom. Uh, amen. So the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Our enemy is not carnal. Your 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 wife isn't your enemy. Your 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 husband's not your enemy. Your kids aren't your enemy. Your in laws aren't your enemy. These aren't your enemy. Mm. The enemy is yeah. the enemy. That's the enemy. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, principalities, in high places. Oh. Not against, but you don't know my wife. <laughs> you don't know my husband. You don't know my boss. I don't need you. I know that the enemy isn't them. We don't wrestle against them. For the weapons of our warfare are not of this earth. It's not in, it's not in human wisdom. It's not in the way that you the way that you've been trained up. It's not in it's not in that. It's not in that. It's not in the natural. It's not in the Adamic nature. Many of us, we go back to the Adamic nature. We go back to the way that we've always done things, and we call it a dual nature. Well, I've got this dual nature because I've got the old nature, and then I've got the new nature. No, you don't. You've only got one. You've only got one nature because God made you in his image, and he, why is it? God, God, gave you his image the day you were born again and he's not schizophrenic so if he's not schizophrenic you've only got nature just like him amen and corinthians chapter 2 i believe it's first corinthians might be second read them both they're both good chapter 2 verse 16 says that this mind is in you so this nature that christ that, that jesus had is in you already so if his nature is already in me that means that's my nature. So why do I keep doing things according to Adam? Why do I keep doing things according to the old way? Because I, I still remember. I still had this idea. I still, I still remember the things that used to work. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I haven't learned to, to, to shift my focus from carnal stuff to shift my focus from my bank account to my vocabulary. I haven't learned to shift my uh, to shift my focus from CNN to BNN, right? Bible News Network. <laughs> Uh, amen. I haven't learned to do that yet because I'm still a baby Christian. But I've been saved for 50 years. I don't care if you've been saved for 150 years. If your focus is still on the natural, you're still a baby Christian. Sorry. I didn't write the book. I just I just teach it. Oh, all right. Let's 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 go back over here. Hallelujah. We're trying to at least get some of these definitions out of the way. Amen. 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 So the carnal, so so the weapons of our warfare are not of the 
flesh. They're none of this old nature. There's it's not of the unregenerated mind. It's not in my education. These are not the weapons of the warfare. Uh, amen. But they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Wait a minute. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Where are we at? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations at every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. That's our warfare. Let's go back up here. For though we walk in the flesh, we are not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. How do we pull down strongholds? By casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Wait a minute. Our warfare is right here. Yeah. Right here. Casting down imaginations. Casting down imagination. Where do imaginations happen? Right here. They happen right here. We want to we we want to get the focus off of us. Oh, we want to get the focus off of us and start praying up in the spirit. So in the name of Jesus, that that ruling spirit. And I've done it too. And I'm not saying that there's not a time to do that. But the majority of our warfare, right here. Yep. Right here. What? Let's let's. I, I want to. I'm going to show you something here. I want to show you something here. Let's read the next verse. And having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So when my imaginations are dealt with, when, when I've learned how to deal with my own mindset, when I've learned how to deal with these imaginations, when I've learned how to cast them down, when I've learned how to bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, when I've learned how to do that, does it mean that I'm going to be walking on water? No, I only walk on water when it rains outside. Okay? Uh, then if there's too much water, I'm walking in it, not on it. Uh, amen. But when the sidewalk's wet, I can walk on it. Uh, amen. So, that means that, that as long as I'm in this body, as long as I'm on this planet, as long as I'm on this side of the dirt, um, I'm going to be dealing with those imaginations. I'm going to be dealing with those things. I'm going to have to bring these, these thoughts into captivity. As long as I'm dealing with these thoughts into captivity, until I learn how to do that and actually become proficient at it and actually begin to begin to begin to walk in more victory than defeat. Come on, can okay? somebody give me an amen? As long as I walk in it, when I when I learn to, to walk in more victory than defeat, amen, then I can begin to pray against these ruling spirits. Now I can begin to, to do these. Are, are you hearing that? Now I can begin to cast out these devils. Now I can begin to do these things. Oh, amen. But until I've learned to, to do this in my own self, that's that's my that's my assignment. Mm -hmm. It says, having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when my obedience is fulfilled. Uh, um. yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Let's get back over there. Let's get back <laughs> over there. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So casting down. Casting down, it comes from the 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 the, the word is uh balo, and it uh, it means to throw. Right there, it means to throw in various applications to, you know, more or less violent or intense. So to cast down, it, it, it's not talking about just, oh, well, you know, it, it means you grab that, that imagination, you grab that thing, and you cast, you, you cast it down. 
Man. It's just like whenever your phone stops working, you just want to throw that thing as hard as you can into the into a cement wall. Am I the only one that's ever? I've never done it, but I've I've wanted to a, a few times. Um, a, amen. When you it means to throw it down and casting down imagination. We're going to break down every word. Casting down imaginations. Imagination is the word logismos. And it means a reasoning, a thought. Akin to logismai. Um, and, and the translated thought uh, in Romans 2.15 suggests, suggested of evil intent. Not of mere reasoning. <gasps> what? Not of mere reasonings, But imaginations speak of an evil intent. So when when these things come to mind, when when we get these these ideas in our head, you know you're not responsible for that. You're not responsible for the thought that comes in your head. Some weird thoughts come into my head, y'all. Some strange thoughts. You're not responsible for the thought that comes in your head. You're responsible to grab that thought and cast it down. Yes, amen. To bring that thought into the obedience of Christ. Mm -hmm. We're not responsible for the thought that comes in us. We're responsible for what we do. When we begin to imagine it, when we begin to, you know, sometimes we'll, we'll, we'll get the idea, well, you know, homeboy or homegirl, they just act in a, act in a mess. Um, you know, I just, you know, gonna, you know, do this or that or say this or say that. And we begin to imagine it. We begin to think about it. We begin to, ah, uh, you know, I'm going to wait for this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that with this blah, blah, blah. And, 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 and we have this evil thought, this evil imagination. And that's what he's talking about. He said, look, these imaginations that you have, uh, you know, to, to, to do the wrong thing, to lie in wait. Oh, I don't like that, that sister. I don't like that brother. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say this next time I'll come around. Uh, amen. And we have an imagination about that. We start thinking, oh yeah, they're gonna I'm gonna say this, and man, they're gonna you know run for the hills, you know, blah blah. Uh, no, they're not. Okay, it, but we have we have this imagination, and that's what he's talking about: casting down these imaginations, these these thoughts that we have that we put that we put imagination to. So the enemy comes up and he says. He says, oh, well, you should say this. You should do this. You, you know, that person did this. That person said that. Okay, shut up, enemy. Or we begin to imagine. We begin to let that thing play out in our head. We begin to allow that thing to have, to have a, a, a say in us. And so we have to cast down those imaginations. Or oh, the yeah. doctor said, the doctor said that, you know, that you got this disease. And then our imaginations start to play out. Oh, yeah. oh I'm going to be this way. I'm going to be that way. Oh, and this, this is going to happen and that's going to happen. But we have to cast down that imagination. Oh, no, this bill came in. I can't pay this bill because of, you know, there's nothing in the bank. And, and then with, oh, no, my car is going to get repossessed. Oh, no, I'm going to be homeless. Oh, no, this is going to happen. Oh, and our imagination begins to take hold. Of us. We have to cast down that imagination. Are, are you hearing me? You yeah. have to take that thought into the obedience of Christ. The, what do you mean the obedience of Christ? We haven't got to that part yet, have we? Okay, every high thing against that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We haven't got to that part. Let me not get ahead. Okay, it says every high thing, every high thing. Oh, make sure. My bad. It says it says where are we at here. It says here. It says casting down imaginations and every high thing. What's a high thing? High thing is is a hoop so an elevated thing, a, a place or a thing. Uh, it's an altitude or a barrier, amen. Height, a high thing, a thing that a thing that's that's that that we give an exaltation to, a thing that we give credence to. When you go to work, your boss is a high thing. 
You give credence to your boss. You give him say in what you do. I'm not saying not to do that, because if you don't do that, you'll be unemployed pretty soon, because um, bosses have a tendency to, to be that way. Um, amen. When we are, when we get that bad news from the doctor, that's a, that's a high thing. When we begin to imagine that, that's, that's, that's a high thing. All this has an authority over me. He said, I have this sickness. He said, I have six months to live. I've heard that said about people in this room. Amen. They only got a certain amount of time to live. You can take that high thing and you can imagine, you can begin to allow that thing to have its way in your life and actually begin to live it out. Or you can cast it down. Every high thing that exalts itself against what? That exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Let's look at that again. It exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Every high thing, where are we at? Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And to bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, exalting itself, it's the word uh, imparo, imparo, um, and it means to lift up. Oh, the doctor more, knows more about my health than God does. He said, I have this. Uh, metaphorically, of exalting oneself is being lifted up with pride. Oh, what? But I, I saw my bank account. It's got a bunch of zeros in there. I don't mean zeros after a, a number. I mean zeros before the number. There, there's just a bunch of nothing in there. I saw that. But I also saw in my Bible that, that, that my God will supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I've read in my Bible that he's already given me everything that I need in this life. He's already made it available to me in, in, in spiritual places, in high places. Oh, what? That means that, that when I see my bank account and I see that bill and, 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 I begin to, and I begin to imagine in that thing, and I'm just using a bank account of bill, but you, you put your trial in there right now, whatever whatever's you're dealing with. Amen. Whether it be a, a doctor, whether it be a, a, a kid acting up, whether it be a spouse acting up, whatever. Whatever it is, you put your stuff in there. A amen. When when these imaginations get into our mind and we begin to play on these natural imaginations instead of casting them down and not allowing them to play in our head, but saying, you know what? God said this about my life. God said that he'd supply all of my needs according to his riches, not according to my bank account, according to his bank account. He said he's going to he's going to supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. All I got to do is stay in Jesus. Not come out of Jesus and get back into Adam. Oh, listen to this. As long as I stay in Christ, as long as I stay in him, all of my needs are taken care of. And I have to, but I have to stop imagining when I when I play on that imagination, when I don't bring down that thing that exalts itself above God. We're not even talking about sin right now. Hopefully we got a handle on sin. But we're, we're just talking about these imaginations that, that bring us into places that we shouldn't be. We're just talking about these thoughts that we have, these this thought pattern that we have that brings us out of Christ and in back into Adam. Amen. It's easy to go back in Adam. We're good at it. We're experienced at it. We've been in there a long time. Mm -hmm. It's hard to stay in Christ. But when we see these things that are coming at us, when we see these things that are that are in our life, and 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 we begin to focus on it, we begin to allow that imagination, we begin to allow those thoughts that are that exalted above God. Above God. If these things are exalted above God, nothing is above God. But in our minds, sometimes these things, we place it above God. Are you hearing this? Thing? Amen. Are you hearing this? Thing? Every, 
the things that, that, that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We have to bring these, cast down these imagination and every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. This is our battle. This is where we're, this is our warfare right here. Our warfare is right here. Our warfare is right is right between our ears. How many of us got ears? Amen. Amen. We all got ears. And our warfare is right there between our ears. Amen. That's the battlefield of the mind. 99.9% .9 of our fight is right there. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we have is this is this helping anybody? Yes, thank yes. you. Yeah. Does that mean, but this is what strongholds are. Strongholds are thoughts that we have in our head. They're ideas that we have in our head. They're places that the enemy hides. And many times the enemy is the enemy in me. Many times the enemy uses, he uses the school system to train you up. Oh, come on. Just, just look at the school system. He uses the school system to train you up to teach you. He uses he uses higher education to, to really just jack up your thinking and to put ideas in your head and put things in your head that's going to keep you from receiving the promises that God has for you. God is not out to get you. God is out to help you. Sometimes it hurts. Sometimes it, you know, sometimes it's hard. But if it if if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Isn't that what they say? If it's yeah. easy, everybody can do it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's hard. But the reward is kingdom. Yeah. Walking in it now on this side of the dirt. Well, you don't have to, you don't have to die to go there, but you can begin yeah. to walk in it now. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, I'm not going to say that uh, we don't get a handle on, the, on this, we're not saved. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. There is an argument there, but that's not what I'm saying. Because look at the thief on the cross. And G he didn't do anything. Well, he did some bad stuff, but he didn't do anything to desert. He just, he just said, Lord, remember. And Jesus said, you will be with me in paradise today. Amen. Did he walk in the kingdom on this earth? No. Did he go to heaven? I believe so. Because that's what Jesus said. He said, you'll be with me in paradise. Amen. Did he do anything to deserve to go to heaven? No. He just received what Jesus did for him. At the last minute. Hallelujah. Okay. Any questions before we stop this? Because we don't want to want to respect everybody's bedtimes. I have uh I don't have any questions, but I have a, a comment. I like when you said um we're not responsible for the thoughts that come into our head. Right. That is that's really uh that's really powerful because sometimes the thoughts that come, you wonder what's wrong with you. Like, wait right. a minute here. This, right. ain't, this ain't God. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. You know we're, it's we're, the enemy. Right. <laughs> and you know we're that's the devil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're responsible for what we do with it. We're not responsible for it getting it. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but man, he, he brings some crazy stuff into my head. Yeah. In the mind too. I think I think everybody on here, the enemy, bring crazy stuff to their yeah. head. Oh, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm I'm so glad to hear that. I, I, I thought it was just me for, for a long time. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm constantly having to uh, cast down wicked imaginations. If that yeah. doesn't glorify God, get out of here. Right. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's it's easy for us right. to identify yeah. the wicked, right? Yeah. It's easy mm -hmm. for us to identify those wicked ones, but those that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Yes. Those are a little bit tougher. 
those we have to those we have to 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 understand the word of. Those that say, oh, well, you know, your bank account, you got a bus to move. You got to, you know, the doctor's report, you know, you're, you know, that you're, you're, you're sick and, and you got this wrong with you and that wrong with you. Well, you know, we, we all got our appointment. Uh, but, uh, but at the same time, you know, God says, I'm the healer of the Lord. God said, he'll, re- he'll supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So anything that we think of that would contradict that. That's those things that exalt yeah. itself against yeah. the knowledge of God. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I understand that now. It could be yeah. anything. I, I use I use finances and health, but it could be anything. Yeah. Any, yes. Yeah. It could be it could be anything. Just just read Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight, and it talks about it talks about the blessings of the Lord. Um, and it says that those blessings will 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 overcome you, will overtake you, will chase after you, and overtake you. Oh, and there's too many of them to to uh, to read uh, on on this Bible study. But it, you know, as Christians, many times we find ourselves chasing after the blessings. But the Bible says, see, see, when we're chasing after the blessings, that's a thought that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. Even though we're doing it in our own minds, seeking after the things of God. Oh, let me let me let me let me let me help you with that. How did the how did the enemy tempt Eve in the garden? Because he tempted Eve, right? How, how did he how did he tempt Eve in the garden? He said, "If you want to be like God, mm-hmm. you have to eat this." But he told me not to. She was already like God. Right. My God. Yeah. But but he came out and said, if you want to be like God, then you have to if if you want the blessings of God, you have to go find that preacher. You have to go find this minister. You have to go over there, listen to that prophet. You have to come over here and listen to this healer. Yeah, if you want the blessings of God, you have to chase them down. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 28 that that these blessings will will pursue you and overtake you. So when we're pursuing the blessing, when we're pursuing the things, it doesn't mean that we don't need to desire it, but it it, it says when we're pursuing, I know people that that, that, uh, they'll they'll chase after prophets and they'll go, I, I used to hang out with this guy, man, he's He's a he's a great evangelist. Love this guy, man. But but he he chases after prophets, and they'll go and he'll get a word from this prophet, and then oh, there's another prophetic meeting over here. This guy's really good, or this woman's really good, and and go over there and, 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 and amen. But he never acted on the first prophecy, or the first prophetic word. Uh, are, are you hearing me? And he's chasing after the blessings of God instead of. Allowing those blessings to to overtake him. Yeah. These are things that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. The knowledge means the things that we understand about. Okay. And I understand that God has already sent his blessings after me. He's already sent his blessings to chase me down. All I need to do is keep him, keep him number one in my heart. Uh, let's do Deuteronomy 28. Let me, let me, where's my Bible? Where's my Bible? Deuteronomy 28. We'll just read just a portion of that. Would that be all right? Amen. Just going to read the first. Okay. Okay. Can you see that? Deuteronomy 28, it says, And it shall come to pass that if thou wilt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I have commanded thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set on high above all nations, set thee on high above all nations. And these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, and if thou wilt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. 
And then it goes into the blessing. Bless you be in the city and bless you be in the field. And, and, and you know, you want to read the blessings, go over the blessings and, you know, call it homework. But, but he says, look, all you got to do is stay in Christ. Sure. Stay in Christ. Keep your focus on him. And all these things will chase after you. I'm the healer of the Lord. I'm delivered by God. I am, even though, even though I may have my struggles, I'm the I'm the I am the healer of the Lord. I am the healing is more than just health. It's more than just your physical body. It's also your spiritual being. Oh, it also means deliverance. Amen. Oh, but we want to chase after this preacher. We want to chase after that one. But that's that's putting that's putting the practice of man above the knowledge of God. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. Hallelujah. And we have to we have to we have to we have to get over that. You really got to get over that. Can I get an amen? Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Any other questions, comments, bones, bottles, answers?